Folks, some sellers just don't get it. I'll explain what I mean and then get into the latest home prices and insights for the Peel and Durham region for week ending October 11th, 2023. About a week ago, with our buyer clients, we're putting an offer on a property. Now this is a, an entry level type of purchase in the $650,000 range. It's a condo townhouse. There's like the whole scenario, the market, you should know, it's lots of condo townhouses for sale in this pocket. This is a new subdivision pocket, less than one year old. And so the condo that we're looking at, the condo townhouse, my clients like over the other ones. And so we decided to put it in offer. Now this particular condo had also been on the market for about two months. And a lot of the condos in there were sitting. So we put in an offer and we receive a counter offer back, which is $5,000 more than what we counter offered. So we're $5,000 apart. And now when we went in, we went in under the, the pretense that we're going in at kind of our basically not so much our exact top dollar, but in fairness to all the other properties that were out there, we're looking at the market conditions. We're looking at the fact that this property is sitting there for two months and that we've got other choices. So we thought our offer was very fair. We gave the seller the closing date that they wanted, making it really easy for the seller. They came back 5,000 more. I was discussing it with my clients and they thought it was fair that we just meet them halfway. We go up $2,500. I, I know this seems a bit crazy, I should say. We're talking about, you know, more than half a million, 650,000 or so. You know, we're talking 2,500, but we went up $2,500. And we expected the seller to come down $2,500. That's not what happened. The seller decided, no, they want the full 5,000. So they wanted my side, the buyers to come up another 2,500. And so when I spoke to my clients about this, their attitude is, or was Santo, there are like literally eight, nine, 10 other condo townhouses in this complex for sale. They're sitting. Our offer is more than fair. The seller here is at a disadvantage because if they don't sell, it's going to be even harder for them to sell. So my clients kind of stood strong at, no, don't be unreasonable, Mr. Or Mrs. Seller you come down another 2,500. I, I was actually pretty, very proud of my clients for taking that stance. And the seller said no. And eventually after going back and forth, trying to iron this out, not understanding like, guys, do you realize I'm speaking to the listing agent to talk to his seller clients and I'm saying, you know, do they not realize they're gonna spend another month of maintenance fees? They're gonna spend another month of mortgage their house is going to sit there longer. It's already two months. It's days on market is like the biggest enemy for, for house prices and the longer it's out there. Plus all this other competition, like we've got other choices. The seller does not have buyers tripping over themselves to buy it. I mean, it's in the favor of the buyer, this market, not what was a year and a half ago. It's in the favor of the buyer right now. And the seller still backed away. And this is what I'm thinking. Like some sellers are just not getting it. Well, since then, it's only a, a week ago, we've already purchased another property for, for my clients and they're, they're happy. The seller's still sitting there. And we see this in neighborhoods. Like the sellers, I, I don't get it in this scenario here. They're prepared to spend more money on expenses, which is gonna be more than the $2,500 that they should have come down. I don't get it, makes no sense to me. And we see this everywhere. Sellers prepared to spend more money, lose more money. If there's a price reduction that's gonna happen, or if just one of those other condos sells a bit below, 
this seller's got no chance of selling. They got to reduce their price. And I guarantee if they reduce their price, it's not going to be by 2,500. It's going to be by 20,000, 30,000, 50,000. And they turn down for 2,500, they turn down a deal. The market is not that kind of a market right now where the sellers can be that picky. And sure, I should have maybe started all this by saying, sellers, it's your house. You can do whatever you want. You're in charge. Buyers, it's your money. It's your mortgage. You're the one buying. You can also do whatever you want. Nobody has to listen to the markets. No one has to pay attention to the market. No one has to pay attention to your realtor. You can do whatever you want. I let logic sometimes kind of guide you as opposed to no, I, I want my want what I want. It doesn't make sense to nobody. And you'll find yourself at the losing end of that if I want what I want is your attitude. If you feel this video can help somebody you know, please pass it along. If you want to speak with me about your real estate situation, it's really simple. Below this video in the description is a link to my calendar. Click on that, book a time that's convenient for you, and we'll talk about whatever's on your mind. Now, let's get into the numbers. Sellers, you're feeling it right now. You got your home ready, you got your marketing plan together, you run the market, buyers aren't showing up. And the ones that are, few offers, those offers that are coming in, they're lower than what you've expected. Something along the way isn't working. Could be you, could be expectations, could be all sorts of different things, but you're feeling it right now. Let's get into the numbers. Here's a quick summary. These are average sold prices for Brampton, Durham, Mississauga. These are detached properties only. Average sold prices broken down by week. I've got three months here. The gap between Durham and Brampton and Mississauga is increasing. There's a little bit larger price gap there. Let's look a little closer. We're going to start off with Mississauga. I've got here the numbers broken down by week for a whole year. For week ending October 11, 35 detached properties were sold in Mississauga. Not a lot of change if we look kind of back since past Labor Day. Here's the September 6 was the last Labor Day weekend. After that, sales have kind of been quite average in the mid 30s, 30 detached properties selling every week. This one week, October 11th, four properties sold at $2 million or more. That kind of boosted up average sold price a bit to 1,447. But if we look back over the last, say, two months, average prices in Mississauga prior to that came way down. We were close to 1.7. They've come right down. They basically, <coughs> excuse me, they've been hovering between high one threes to high one fours is about a hundred thousand dollar gap that they've been going up and down over the last two months or so compared to last year one four four seven is five percent higher than where we were this time last year the median price were two percent higher than where we were this time last year and i kind of have a note here there's been not much change or slightly trending down over the last to two and a half months. 35 were sold, 20% sold at list price or more. We used to be in the 40s, high 40s, 50s. We're now at 20%. So, <coughs> excuse me, lots of sellers had the expectation of, I'm gonna list it at this price. We're gonna have multiple offers. I, I know it's hard to believe many sellers still believe that this is the market that we're in. Even if you price it really low, because you could, no matter what market, you could generate lots of attention by your list price. But then come off for night, you're not really getting the number you feel you should be getting and you'll end up relisting. I would avoid all that and just put it out at the right price the first time. But anyways, 
20% selling at list price or more. Listings after Labor Day, we shot up, but it's just basically one week since then. Listings have been coming down. However, active listings have not been increasing that much. They kind of been fairly steady since we came out of Labor Day. Months of inventory sitting at 3.7. Overall, over the last three months, we can see a very steady increase in months of inventory. Very much in Mississauga, we're sitting in a balanced market for detached properties. Here's Brampton. Sales down. I mean, outside, just as soon as we passed Labor Day, sales jumped up and we thought, wow, here's the, the, the fall frenzy, our second spring. Didn't happen, it lasted, well, lasted one week. It happened for one week. Sales have been dropping ever since. 33 detached properties were sold. No property sold at $2 million or more. It seems the luxury market in Brampton, I mean, we used to do three, four, five, six selling at, well, I don't have any sixes here, sorry, five selling at $2 million or more. We got two weeks in a row now, no 2 million or more properties being sold. 33 were sold. Average sold price has come way down to 1,121,000. We used to be 1340 or so. Average prices come way down. For a few weeks, it looks like average prices are climbing up, but now they've come way down. 1,121,000 is 4% lower than where we were this time last year. The median price is 1% higher than where we were this time last year. And looking at the dotted line, the four week moving average, you could see prices average prices have been trending down. Medium prices, kind of flat, but average prices have been trending down. Of the 33 that sold, 24% sold at list price or more, and that's a huge drop from the previous week of 46%. Listings, yeah, outside of Labor Day, listings jumped up. We thought, wow, here's the frenzy, lots of action. Didn't last long, listings kind of stayed the same and now they're dropping. Active listings, the amount of properties available for sale, not changing much, which, which kind of, you know, some of these don't make sense unless you understand the whole picture. So sales are down, listings did go up a bit. You'd figure there's a lot more active listings. What active listings account for also is properties that have come off the market, they won't be calculated here. So active listings is really the properties actively available for sale at the end of the period. So midnight, October 11th, how many properties are for sale? That number hasn't changed much, even though listings are up because some people choose to terminate their properties. Well, that's not changing much. Months of inventory, however, is changing because sales are dropping. Even though active listings are staying the same, sales are dropping. So we have more inventory for fewer purchases right now. Well, you can see Labor Day was here. Well, actually Labor Day was here. Since then, the one week sales were good and then sales are dropping. So now months of inventory sitting at 5.1. That's right at the border of balanced market, buyer's market, and there's many pockets in Brampton where there's just so many properties for sale, especially some of the newer subdivisions. You're sitting in a buyer's market in some of those where buyers really control the show. Here's Durham region. Now for Durham, I'm using Pickering, Ajax, and Whitby as my Durham sample. 33 detached properties were sold. No property sold at $2 million or more. Overall, since we peaked in May, sales generally have been dropping almost on a weekly basis when we look at the Durham region. Average sold price from one week to the next did go up, but overall has been dropping. Average sold price is now 1,148,000. 1,148 is 6% higher than where we were the exact same week last year. Medium price is 8% higher than where we were this time last year. And when you look at the dotted line, the four week moving average, kind of looks like there's not a lot of change. But when we look at it kind of this way, we can see that 
prices are tended to, to, to be dropping. But the four week move it average kind of averages these highs and the low and averages overall not much change. Of the 33 that sold, 49% sold at list price or more. That's down from the previous week. Listings, listings jumped up, but now they're trending down. 112 detached properties were listed. Active listing is climbing, not at a big pace, but it is climbing. Months of inventory, Labor Day, since Labor Day has been on the increase. We're now sitting at 2.8 months of inventory. Durham region has the uh, of these areas of Toronto, the GTA, as far as the whole region goes, Durham has the lowest months of inventory. If you break it down further, there's pockets. Scarborough sitting, you know, very, very low when it comes to months of inventory also. But the Durham region at 2.8, it's one of the lowest months of inventory of the whole GTA. Here are condos. These are condo apartments for all of Peel region. Only 17 condos were sold. That's why I put an exclamation mark there. It's like, what, 17, that's it. We went from 36 down to 17. Only one sold at $1 million or more. With the previous week, we sold 36, four at $1 million or more. Average price jumped way up to 691. This week, we kind of came way down. We're back in line to where we were before the high peak. 606 is the new average sold price. 606 is 10% lower than where we were this time last year. The median price is 2% lower than where we were this time last year. Of the 17 that sold, look, 35% sold at list price or more. It's only 17 being sold. It's tough to, you know, you could look at that this and say, wow, there, there was a frenzy. Not really, look, so selling at list price or more is just one metric, but it doesn't tell the whole, whole story. Sometimes these properties have been on the market for a while and the seller absolutely has to sell. So they drop their price really low and boom, it sells right away at list price because it's a phenomenal price. And yeah, that'll make it into the percentage of selling at list price or more, but it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's fighting over every listing that's out there. Listings, past Labor Day, they did jump up and now have been declining. Active listings has been increasing. Look at this, months of inventory, nine. That's absolutely crazy. Keep in mind, the reason it's so high is because sales went way down to 17. We went from 36, which was here, down to 17, and the formula calculates it and says, well, if we're buying only 17 a week, and this is how many properties are out there, based on only 17 sales a week, that's our new months of inventory. So I imagine sales kind of get up to a little bit more normal, what they were the previous few weeks, that'll come down in line, but no matter how you slice it, we're sitting in a buyer's market. We were in a buyer's market um, uh, just past Labor Day here. This is what's happening with condos in Peel region. So here's a quick summary. In most cases, we're either in a balanced market or we're in a buyer's market right across from Mississauga, Brampton, Durham, and condos across Peel region. Thanks for watching. Very, very important to understand what's happening if you're looking to transact. I know I've been talking a lot about sellers, but buyers, you got to understand what's going on also so you don't overpay and you make smart choices. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.